the tensions between special counsel Jack Smith and the judge who's puzzling and eyebrow-raising decisions have led to questions about whether she is simply indulging Donald Trump's strategy of delay, delay, and delay again, have now turned into a war of words. In a ruling issued this late afternoon, about an hour ago, Judge Aileen Cannon denied Donald Trump's request to dismiss the classified documents case based on the Presidential Records Act defense. In essence, Trump was claiming that he had the right to hold on to national security state secrets because they somehow belonged to him. Today, Judge Cannon rejected that rather ridiculous defense, handing Jack Smith an ostensible win. This could just be round one on these issues. Cannon saying that the criminal charges against Trump, quote, make no reference to the Presidential Records Act, nor do they rely on that statute for purpose of stating an offense. Adding this, quote, accepting the allegations of the superseding indictment is true. The Presidential Records Act does not provide a pretrial basis to dismiss. The judge there leaving the are open to revisiting this issue. And as we've reported on this very broadcast at this very hour yesterday, Kennan had asked both prosecutors and Trump's defense team to address the question of whether those documents could be considered personal in jury instructions, which led to a sharp rebuke from special counsel Jack Smith's team. He called the idea, quote, fundamentally flawed. In her ruling today, Cannon fires back, saying that Smith's demand to settle the issue of whether the documents could be considered personal once and for all is, quote, unprecedented and unjust. It's getting hot in here. It's where we start today with two of our favorite experts and friends. Former lead investigator for the January 6th Select Committee, Tim Hafey, is here. With me at the table, former top official of the Department of Justice and MSNBC legal analyst Andrew Weissman is here. Uh, break this down for me. Well, it may be a bit confusing for people because you might think, oh, well, she ruled for Jack Smith on this motion about the Presidential Records Act, so what's the problem? Jack Smith said, I need a ruling on the Presidential Records Act, that it's not a basis to dismiss the indictment, and she ruled in his favor that it's not. Here's the problem. Until this ruling today, she skipped over making this ruling and said, oh, I just want you to give me jury instructions, which was already very bizarre for a, a trial that has not started and there isn't even a date for it to start. When do you normally give jury instructions? At some point during the trial. So, you know, a long time from now. But it was worse than that because she didn't just say, give me your jury instructions as to what you think the law is that I should charge the jury. She said, you only have two choices. You can't, you, I don't want to hear you from anything else. I only want to hear Presidential Record Act Choice 1 and Presidential Record Act Choice 2. In other words, she was all in on the Presidential, Presidential Records Act is a defense here, and she only gave two options to the parties to address. Um, and so Jack Smith, the reason everyone was like, oh, he really took her on, because he's like, you need to give me a ruling, because I don't think the Presidential Record Act applies at all. And the reason you are not ruling is because if you were to rule against us, we get to go to the 11th Circuit. But, but I guess the thing as a non-lawyer is that the Presidential Records Act isn't even applicable in the eyes of Trump's own Attorney General Bill Barr, or Trump's own former defense team, who says basically, legally, his goose is cooked. Absolutely. This is, this is, I could, this I can make simple. This is a criminal case. There are criminal statutes that are charged. The Presidential Records Act is a civil statute. It has nothing to do with this so case. So why did the judge in a criminal trial have anything to say about it? He, she shouldn't have. And that is why what Jack Smith was saying is, I need you to tell me now, are you going to buy off on Donald Trump's crazy theory involving a civil statute that has nothing to do with this case? And so it's basically within, a talking point for his Fox News interviews. It, exactly. And, but it also would be a basis for her to say, I'm dismissing this case on this crazy theory. And, and this is where it is complicated. If she did that um, during the trial and did what's called a Rule 29, she has unfettered, unreviewable discretion to get rid of the case. But can't she still do that? So exactly. So the, the part that you read as when going into this, which I think is key, is she said that the Presidential Record Act does not provide a pretrial basis to dismiss. In other words, I'm not going to dismiss now. So what that means is Jack Smith is one pretrial, he, so he's prevailed, 
But that's pretrial. She's not saying it's not a basis at trial. Um, and that, just to be clear, th it is not a basis pre-trial, it is not a basis at trial, it is not a basis after trial. It has nothing to do with this criminal case. So the next question really is, what is Jack Smith going to do? Um, because you really have a judge who was saying something that was completely lawless. She has kept the door open to continuing down this track. And he's got a real concern of once the jury is sworn, will it be too late? So there, these are the things he can do. Um, he obviously can do nothing. Um, he can try and make a motion to recuse her. Um, she has to respond, and then that can be appealed. He could try and take this record. And Why hadn't he done that already, based on the fact that she hadn't ruled on anything yet? <sighs> so not There's ruling. a loud sigh. Yeah, not ruling on things. So to get somebody off of a case, it's a big deal. Like, you have to show that the person is really just sort of really in the bag for the, for one side or the other, has done things that are improper. So not ruling on anything lets so, you aid one side and not the other, but uh, not get recused. Yeah, so she, exactly. So she has been sitting on a variety of things. But to be fair, she has ruled on some things. It's just, you know, it's coming out like an eyedropper. It's, you know, compared to what we're seeing in New York or what we're seeing in Georgia um, or what we saw in the D.C. federal case where you see judges operating you know, in good faith, and you may not like all their decisions, but they're moving the case along as you should. So she is not doing that, but she is making some rulings. So it's not like she's put a complete stop um, to the case in terms of making some rulings. Um, so he could try and recuse her now. He could say this is enough to um, go up to the 11th Circuit now. The other thing that he could do is if she tries to revisit this at trial, there is the ability to go up during a trial. I've done that. Um, it's, all of these, by the way, are, they're hard. Um, this is, just, just imagine, you don't want the parties on one side or the other to just be, oh, I don't like the judge's rulings, give me a new judge. Um, you have to have a good record. I do think here there is a good record. One of the things that I just found amazing is obviously, you know, Jack Smith pushed for this, saying you need to make a decision, and within one day she's making this decision. So he's sort of won the, you know, the battle, um, this this little skirmish. But some of her language is it's hard to not view it as, I don't know how to describe it, disingenuous, um, not terribly candid, um, where she said. I was just, when I ordered you to address just one of two options and only those two options, she said, I was just trying to understand the party's positions on the law. I mean, the party's positions on the law were neither of these apply, but she said, no, no, no. I, you have to address these two and only these two. So, I mean, her statements as to trying to cover her tracks as to what she was doing, I think are going to be fodder one way or the other when this case eventually is in the 11th Circuit. Tim Hafey, um, again, everything I know about the law, I learned from all eight seasons of Suits. Um, but I have covered Trump now for eight, nine years. And if I were interested in holding him accountable, I would want to be somewhere where this nine-year record of people that are tied to him doing whatever he wants them to do couldn't interfere with the, you, we were talking with the facts, the facts of the case. The facts of this case are, they're, they're you know, they're, they're, they're a supernova. Bill, you can't get between Bill Barr and a camera when he's talking about this case because he thinks it's open and shut and done and Trump is toast. You can't get between Trump and, and some people who represented him in other legal issues where they successfully muddied the waters in terms of what Trump's base thought of it. Not so with this case where one of the star witnesses is his own lawyer, Evan Corcoran, his criminal defense attorney. I mean, what stops Jack Smith or what has stopped him from, from charging part of it somewhere where he doesn't have to deal with a judge that doesn't seem interested in an aggressive pursuit of the facts? Yeah, it's a good question. And, and prosecutors make venue choices based on a lot of factors. There may have been some conduct here that took place in other jurisdictions. There's been some reporting about uh, documents you may have maintained in New Jersey. Maybe you could argue Washington is a place because that's where the information originated. But the default, Nicole, is to charge the case where the majority of the conduct occurred 
that is Florida. And again, you don't get to choose the judge that you draw. There are several judges in that federal district in Florida. So I think Jack Smith has been hoping all along that for all the reasons you've said, because of the strength of this case, the relatively straightforward theory, it doesn't matter where it's tried. It's just so strong and so compelling that he could charge it in any any jurisdiction and it wouldn't matter. Um, he's facing a really inexperienced judge who has only had four or five criminal trials as a judge. Um, not ideal for a case that does raise some novel issues. I think they're novel. They're not that complicated. And to go all the way back to what Andrew was saying, the, the Presidential Records Act just does not apply here. The Presidential Records Act deals with paper, with, with records. And it's a civil statute that says if something doesn't involve your official business as president doesn't necessarily need to be maintained by the archives upon your departure. The Espionage Act, which is what's at stake here, that governs information. It doesn't matter the form in which it takes. You could say something out loud, and if it's classified and it is not secure and it is intercepted or overheard by someone, or if it's in a document, or if it's in a phone call, or whatever the form, it doesn't matter, right? So, so he's charged a violation of the Espionage Act based on information. And he says the Presidential Records Act, that civil statute, that doesn't apply. That's right. I mean, that's really clearly right. And Judge Cannon's an experience. I, I won't go as far as to say, you know, bias uh, uh, toward the former president. I'll, I'll leave that to others. But for whatever reason, we're not getting to the courtroom. I think Jack Smith doesn't have a basis to recuse. An inexperienced judge who rules slowly is not a basis. There needs to be some indication of a personal bias. I think his really only choice is to try this case to continue to argue the inapplicability of the Presidential Rec Records Act and hope that she is convinced by the real clarity of that position whenever she rules mid-trial. She doesn't give those crazy jury instructions that we're submitting. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.